Hello, good afternoon, and thank you. While I was preparing this conference, I was thinking about the privilege of working in La Padrera and being able to talk about Gaudí and his works. I have been working there for more than 15 years. And when the organizer suggests me to focus the presentation on Gaudí, nature inspiration, I remember the occasion when in 201, the building was taken by more than 100 birds to celebrate the World Bird Day. Yes, you hear me well, taken. 147 polyester figures had invaded La Padrera and were all over the building. Some people think that La Padrera facade is like a cliff or a seaside or a mountain. And yes, perhaps there was no doubt that was the perfect place to put white storks, bolters, owls, and hermit ibis as if they were part of the same building. However, the idea that La Padrera is the proper place for birds cannot be farther from the truth. Because I will tell you a secret. Birds are afraid of the forms of the facade and especially of the roof. No pigeons or seagulls are flying around. The only bird that still remains is a hoopoot, drawn in one of the broad iron balconies. Perhaps Gaudí thought that the phrasing bird would be the perfect homage to his naturalistic point of view. My aim in the next 15 minutes will be to leave aside this anecdote and show you the basic elements of Gaudí's lessons from nature. But who was Gaudí? He was an artist, a transgressor, a technician, a classical, a modern, an intuitive, a modernist, an avant-garde, an investigator, a revolutionary. What makes his work so special? Gaudí moved to Barcelona from Reus in Tarragona and studied at the School of Architecture, where he graduated at 26. It's significant, one of his teachers said. I'm not sure whether we are given a degree in architecture to a genius or a lunatic. He came from a family of coppersmiths and soon became interested in nature and craftsmanship, vital elements of his work. The man and his work are full of contrast. His personality, rigorous and passionate, obsessive sometimes. His organic view of architecture, his rationalism, his empirical methods, his innovative idea, his religious beliefs and his spirit of renovation. His workshop at La Sagrada Familia is an example of all this. There he collects plaster models, wire mesh figures, skeletons, geometrical shapes, anatomical parts, rocks, plants, and animals. Curiously, he was so devoted to his work that he ended living in his studio. His life was his work. His career was a process of reflection and analysis of different architectural styles, preparing for a new architecture between tradition and modernity, searching for his own formal language, which includes the use of traditional materials, brick, ceramic, tile, and stone, the curve over the straight line, asymmetry and dynamic shapes, rich decoration, and the use of vegetable and other organic motifs. But unlike his contemporaries, he searched structural solutions. Gaudí went farther, opening his mind to a new world inspired by nature. He did not mimic it, but used his intelligence to detect and draw out functional and structural solutions. In nature, he found shapes that have elegant biological forms, and he also was inspired by the colors and textures. Gaudí defined forms from nature and transfer to his works, as we, as we are going to see right now. 
La Padrera, the last of his work, is an example for introducing lessons from nature as the real organic architecture. It would be difficult to find another work that while satisfying functional needs, offers so many design and special characteristics. With La Padrera, Gaudí transformed the concept of a corner in La Chample. No straight lines, if not the movement of a strong mass. As he said, straight lines belong to men, curves to God. Following the models inspired by nature, although without forgetting Gaudi's logic, the concept of the structure of La Padrera is close to human anatomy. The structure is based on stone and brick pillars, almost 90, and a network of metallic elements. The pillar structure is unlike to the bones that sustain the body. Tibia, fibula, femur, and spine. The horizontal elements have the function of ribs, pelvis, and collarbone. The roof is the skull, the foundation is the feet, and the reliefs and skin of the facade, the flesh and skin of the human body. Among other structural examples, one of his favorite solutions was the catenary arc. The attic of La Padrera, that you can see here, is a total different structure. The principle of the catenary arc is simple. The equilibrium of a chain suspended at two points is obtained through a curve. If we invert this curve, we have a slender arc that is easy to build, supports itself, and does no need any batteries. Gaudí did this with no mathematical calculation. The R has perfect low distribution, has no points of tension, and make bricks work by compression, transforming the arc into a self-supporting structure. The shape of the catenary arc is visible everywhere in nature. The rainbow, a forest liana, or a python skeleton as we have it in the Spy Gaudi in La Padrera. The form you are seeing, saying, seeing, the form of the behief is the hexagon. The hexagon saves and paves, maximum covering, minimum material. These tiles are located in the interior rooms of the apartment, and seven are required to view all the allegories on the marine world. Starfish, snails, and seaweed, which brings the sinus movement of the sea facade to the interior. Some other examples that can, that can be seen in this case in La Sagrada Familia. Gaudi used to say, that tree besides my workshop is my true master. The idea of the temple for Gaudi was a forest of trees, the columns, with branch and foliage, the vaults. The Nautilus shell is a perfect example for a spiral staircase. It's a spiral, like other shapes that occur in nature, is compact, increasing in size without altering its shape, thereby saving space. Building a wavy surface should be very complicated. But here Gaudí gives us another lesson, a simply and ingenious approach to build an stable structure with minimum material, strong, and facilitates rainwater to slide easily. Gaudí learned that there are no straight lines in the organic world. He said, there is no a single vertical column in the world. The only thing that needs to be studied is the extent to which it can be inclined. For Gaudí, vertical lines do not necessarily absorb all the tensions. One of the works that reveal his naturalistic concept of architecture and landscape is Whale Park. He adjusts the, sh the shape of the streets to the topography of the land, project viaducts not removing the original ground, and built with local stone. Another lesson 
organic and ecologic. Back to La Pedrera. A trencadís of transparent glass invites us to enter the building. The large iron and glass doorway has a suggestive form based on different organic shapes. He was also able to introduce a major innovation in the typology of precedent buildings. Instead of a small ventilation patios, he decides to hold the structure with two central couriers, organics in form to facilitate better lighting and ventilation in the 16 apartments. They act like clearings in a wood to distribute light in the interior. Among other organic views of the courier, some people have seen this organic one, a kidney. While young generations have other inspiration motives, as I heard in a school visit last week. As we were saying at the beginning, he also was inspired by the forms, colors, and textures. Here you have some examples that can be seen in La Padrera, always with the idea of plasticity, form, and function. Got the use concave and convex form in combination with a dynamic helicoidal shape for the spiral staircase that links the attic and the roof. The window of the attic is protected by original visors that allow indirect light to enter the attic and shelters the window from the rain. And the marvelous broad iron recycled balconies. Frequent reference is made to seaweed as if he wished natural vegetation to spring from the facade rocks. It is even said that Gaudi won his balconies to be festooned with plants, to heighten even more the reference to the natural world and the desert dunes. Forms that emphasize the flowing movement of the plaster ceilings. The main idea was to give continuity to the undulating rhythms on the facade. Gaudi applied the same rigorous standards whether he was designing a building or a small object. The furniture he designs has constant attention to ergonomics, as the door handles, whose shapes perfectly adapt to hand to facilitate manipulation. He was always concerned about building techniques and functional construction because he thought that everything should be at the service of humanity. I have to hurry. Um, to conclude, Gaudi was certainly ahead of his time, admired but criticized by part of the society. Even his contemporaries took his organic vision of architecture to the limit. Officially called as a Milá because of the owner's family name, it has properly been known as the pejorative name of La Padrera, a quarry. It said that when the stone cutters were modulating the facade, seemed that instead of placing the stone, they were extracting it. God is crazy. He's building a stone quarry in the middle of Passeig de Gracia. La Padrera was also the jokes published in satirical magazines. Gaudi died in 1926, and with that time has become a figure of universal importance. And so La Padrera and all his works. That's why they have received the most important distinctions in heritage. In this meeting, Gaudi should be an inspiring model for all of us. I think the lesson we've learned is clear. The great book ever open, and we must make every effort to read, is the book of nature. Thanks very much for your patience and attention.